Hello students, our today's topic is protein kinases and today we will discuss structure, types and function of protein kinases. The eukaryotic protein kinases are defined as enzymes that use the gamma phosphate of adenosine triphosphate means ATP to phosphorylate serine, threonine or tyrosine residues in proteins because phosphorylation mainly occurs at the serine, threonine and tyrosine residues. Now where this gamma phosphate of adenosine triphosphate is present on ATP? Look at this diagram. This is a structure of ATP. And you know ATP is composed of an adenine ring. This is an adenine ring, ribosugar and three phosphate groups. One, two and three. The phosphate group, this, these groups of phosphate group are usually called alpha phosphate group, beta phosphate group and gamma phosphate group. Gamma phosphate group is the primary phosphate group on the ATP molecules that is hydrolyzed when the energy is needed to drive anabolic reactions. Basically, this gamma phosphate group is present, means typically located the farthest from the ribosugar. You can see here, this is ribosugar and this is gamma phosphate group. This gamma phosphate group has higher energy of hydrolysis than either that of the alpha and the beta phosphate, right? When the first plant genome means Abidopsis thaliana genome was sequenced, a surprising number of protein kinases, over 1000 were identified. The first plant protein kinase sequence were identified in pea and in rice through the use of degenerate primers. Now structure of protein kinases. This is a structure of protein kinases. Protein kinases share a similar three-dimensional catalytic domain. This is catalytic domain. Catalytic domain consists of 250 to 300 amino acids and composed of a larger, generally alpha helical C terminal subdomains and a smaller, usually beta sheet N terminal subdomain. This is N terminus, this is C terminus, and this is catalytic domain. Now, this N and C terminus are linked by a peptide scaffold, forming a deep groove, enables the binding of peptide substrate and an ATP molecule, right? This is ATP binding site of catalytic domain and this is substrate binding site. Now, ATP binding region rotates into on and off conformation depending on ATP binding and the activation state of the enzyme. Next, types of protein kinases. Protein kinases are classified into five major groups according to the amino acid residue that they phosphorylate, right? Including serine tunine protein kinases, abbreviated as STPKs, tyrosine protein kinases, TKs, histidine specific kinases, dual specificity protein kinases, and aspartic acid, glutamic acid specific protein kinases, right? First, serine tunine protein kinases. Serine through 9 protein kinase is a large family of protein kinases, mainly includes cyclin dependent kinase, mitogen activated protein kinase, protein kinase D, NATO kinase, DNA dependent protein kinase, uh, aurora protein kinases, and pancreatic kinanogenase. Right? So, first we'll start with the first type of serine through 9 protein kinases, that is cyclin dependent kinase. Cyclin dependent kinases. Uh, are abbreviated as CDKs. They play a central role in cell cycle regulation network. Uh, and its main uh, biological role is to regulate different phases of the cell cycle from G1, S, G2 to M phase and means to complete the whole cycle, right? The CDKs subunit need to be combined with corresponding cyclin to activate. That's why cyclin dependent kinase. Activated CDKs as exhibit protein kinase activity that phosphorylate different substrate proteins, thereby initiating or regulating the cell cycle, right? The substrate activated by CDKs mainly include retinal glioma protein, tumor suppressor gene, 
that is P107 and P107, uh, P103, etc. Right? Uh, which have important functions of uh, promoting cell cycle phase transition, initiating DNA synthesis, running cell division, and promoting cell cycle operation. CDKs are also involved in regulation of transcription, mRNA processing, and differentiation of uh, neural cells. Right? Next is mitogen activated protein kinases abbreviated as MAPKs. MAPKs are essential components for controlling amblyogenesis, cell differentiation, cell proliferation, and cell death. They are also involved in directing cellular response to various stimuli such as mitogen, osmotic stress, heat shock, and pro-inflammatory cytokinin. Right? Mammals express at least four distinctly regulated groups of MAPKs. First is extracellular signal-related kinase. Second is Chun N terminal kinase. Third, P38 protein. And the fourth one is ERK5. Next is protein kinase D, abbreviated as PKD. It is involved in regulation of cellular function, such as cell Golgi reverse membrane trans uh, transport, cell growth proliferation, migration, differentiation, and apoptosis. PKD protects the myocardium uh, and reduces the damage of cardiomyocytes induced by calcium overload. Right? It affects the transport of transferrin receptor, means TFR, and low-density receptor-related protein, LRP, in hippocampal neurons. PKD is also involved in regulation of the release of inflammatory factors, right? Next type of serine 39 protein kinases is pancreatic kinanogenase, abbreviated as PKs. PKs can improve sensory or motor nerve conduction velocity through kinin, right? Inhibit platelet aggregation. Prevent blood clot formation, dilate blood vessels, enhance uh, microcirculation, and reduce uh, ischemia and hypoxia. PKs has the same efficacy as um, prostaglandin E1, means PGE1, in improving pathological changes of diabetic peripheral neuropathy and improving neurological function in patients with type 2 diabetes. Uh, therefore, PK, uh, PKs will become a potential new drug for the treatment of diabetic neuropathy, right? Next type of protein kinases is tyrosine kinases. Tyrosine kinases are classified into three types. Non-receptor tyrosine protein kinases, receptor tyrosine kinases, and nuclear tyrosine protein kinase. First is non-receptor tyrosine protein kinases abbreviated as NRTKs, right? Non-receptor tyrosine protein kinases are divided into 11 families with at least 30 members. They mediate signal transduction of various growth factor receptors, cytokine receptors, lymphocyte, antigen receptors, and adhesion molecule uh, integrins. NRTKs mainly including SRC kinase family, JAK kinase family, SKY, and ZAP70 family. Now, SRC kinase family, uh, a product of, this is a product of uh, um, proto-neogene CSRC involved in antigen receptors, cytokine receptors, and integrin-mediated transmembrane signaling, the uh, SRC kinase family, right? Second, JAK kinase family, including JAK1, JAK2, JAK3, and TYK2. They mainly mediate, mediate transmembrane signal transduction of cytokine receptor. And the last one, uh, SKY, ZAP70 family, including Sky and Zeta gene associated protein 70. 
it mediates signal transduction of lymphocyte antigen uh, means lymphocyte antigen receptors and certain cytokine receptors uh, and it's, uh, it is also important in lymphocyte differentiation uh, development and activation right now next receptor tyrosine kinase receptor tyrosine kinase is a cell surface receptor that has uh, also a tyrosine kinase activity a signal binding domain of receptor tyrosine kinase is on the cell surface while the tyrosine kinase enzymatic activity reside in the cytoplasmic part of the protein right a transmembrane alpha helix connects these two regions of the receptor right receptor tyrosine kinases are essential components of signal transduction pathways that mediate cell to cell communication these signal pass transmembrane receptors which bind the polypeptide ligands mainly growth factors that play a key role in processes such as cellular growth differentiation metabolism and uh, uh, motility right approximately 20 different rtk classes have been identified next nuclear tyrosine protein kinase protein tyrosine uh, phosphorylation plays an important role in the transduction of extracellular signals the proto uh, means uh, uh, prototypical protein kinase are locate, localized at plasma membrane just listen prototypical protein tyrosine kinase mainly are localized at the plasma membrane and are coupled to receptors that bind extracellular factors thus protein tyrosine phosphorylation was previously thought to occur only in the cytoplasm however several cytoplasmic tyrosine kinases have recently been found to enter the nucleus and uh, means resident nuclear proteins such as catalytic uh, subunit of RNA polymerase 2 have been found to be phosphorylated on tyrosine. Nuclear tyrosine kinases may participate in the regulation or transcription, uh, the cell cycle and possibility on other nuclear processes, right? Next class of uh, protein kinases is histidine specific protein kinases. Histidine protein kinases is a kinase that phosphorylates histidine in a substrate protein, mainly including two component histidine protein kinase means uh, it can regulate the response to environmental stimuli and two component mammalian histidine protein kinase. One is branch chain alpha ketoacid dehydrogenase kinase and pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase. Next is dual specificity protein kinases. Dual specificity kinases, as its name indicates, phosphorylate their substrate on serine, threonine and tyrosine residues. They intervene in the regulation of cell growth, differentiation and apoptos uh, apoptosis. Dual specificity kinases include at least members of superfamily of mitogen activated protein kinases as well as those of the family of glycogen synthase kinases. Right? And the last type of protein kinases is aspartic acid glutamic acid specific protein kinases aspartic acid glutamic acid specific protein kinases are a category of protein kinases that can phosphorylate aspartate and glutamate right so this is all about the structure type and function of uh, protein kinases if you have any question uh, just write down in the comment section so that I can answer, right? Thank you so much.